Hey guys, happy Thursday. Hope your day is going well. Ours is going awesome over here. We negotiated an inspection and we have a great new listing. So if you didn't see that new listing, make sure you go check that out. All right, so today's Thursday, which means seller tips. So we're going to discuss some frequently asked questions that sellers ask us a lot. And so I thought that might help you. If you all have a question after I'm done with this, please put it in the comments because somebody else probably has the same question. Or if you're too shy, you can send me a message and I'll be happy to get back to you. So let's get on down to it. Frequently asked questions. Hey there, nice to see you. Number one, will you help us decide what we need to do before closing? Matter of fact, we would rather you ask us first because we would love to help you get your house ready for the market because we can help you decide what's worth doing that's going to give you a return on your investment and what is not. So we want you to make some cost-effective decisions. So please, if you're going to be listing your home, make sure you reach out to us as your real estate agents first because we can give you some hints. Um, you know, some, some things you might do might not give you any return on there, so we want to talk to you about that. Like, maybe your siding's fine and you're going to go put new siding on just because you don't like the color. That's, that's not going to do much for you. Um, unless it's like hot pink or something, then we got to talk about that siding. Uh, number two, I'm looking at my little handy notes here. How long will it take for my home to sell? That is what we call days on market. Days on market is how long it takes until you get under contract on your house. So according to, let me see, let me see what we have here. It's gonna be neighborhood to neighborhood and we will supply you with the days on market for your neighborhood. So I live in Salisbury. Salisbury may be an average of 45 days for average days on market. Powderham next door, maybe 60. It just depends. So we'll definitely supply you with that. Is staging really that important? It is that important. Now I'm gonna read you this statistic. According to IAHSP, and Jonathan talked about this a little bit, 95% of staged homes sell on average in 11 days or less compared to, and get this, compared to 90 days or less for unstaged homes. Um, in addition, Zillow reports that a home occurs a 1% price reduction for every month that it remains on the market. Market. So staging will reduce your days on market for your listings. Uh, here's the thing. We live in an HGTV world and buyers can't always imagine things if it's not pristine. Staging will take that weird nook and it will say, okay, this is what you do with this nook and it makes you realize, okay, that could be a little office, that could be a little sitting room and that could be this. So staging is super important. And Jonathan touched on it before on a video like two weeks ago. Staging isn't saying that your stuff is bad. It's just saying, let us give you what appeals to the masses because decorating and staging are two different things. Number four, should I be present when uh, buyers view my home? No, 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 no. Uh, our goal is to have the buyer envision their things in your home. And we know it can be tempting to stay and say, look what I did because you have pride of ownership and you should have pride of ownership, but let me show that off in my marketing. You need to be out so that the buyers can envision their stuff and so you don't inadvertently give away some negotiation power. You might accidentally say, because it'll conversation will come up, you might say, well, we're moving to Texas and we have to be out in a month to a buyer that's like, okay, they're desperate. And so it gives us some negotiation power. So please don't stay for showings. Number five out of 10. Doesn't it make sense to list at a higher price and we can always negotiate down? We understand this is tempting to do. However, we strongly discourage it. Um, sellers who intentionally price their home too high often end up chasing down the market. And what that means is if you list at 500 and we knew it should have been at 450, you'll actually net less than what you should have. You'll net less than that 450 because in the minds of the buyers, they're like, hey, what the house has been on, what's wrong with it, what's wrong with it? Don't chase down the market. Um, remember, the longer it's on, it's gonna look bad to the buyers. Number six, what are seller concessions? This is when buyers ask you, the seller, to pay part of their closing costs. Even though we're at like a 2.9% inventory in Richmond, which indicates a huge seller's market, six is balanced, anything below is a seller's, we still see people asking for this. Um, it's just the financial climate that we're in. A lot of people still need a little assistance with that. So that's what seller concessions are. It's you helping the buyer with closing costs. 
The thing is, that is completely negotiable, and we will help you in determining, you know, if that's a good thing to do, and if, if in your area that's commonplace, you know, there are some neighborhoods where you might see it 60% of the time, and so your next offer might be asking for closing costs too, so you might wanna work with the offer you have in hand. Number seven, what happens if the property doesn't appraise? All right, bear with me all, I'm talking a lot here. If the house doesn't appraise, three things can happen. Number one, you can reduce to the fair market value of the property. And that fair market value was determined by the appraiser who was hired by the bank at a uh, arm's length, meaning they have no skin in the game. The appraiser doesn't work for the bank, but they were hired by the third party. The appraiser says your house is worth $400,000 and maybe the purchase price is 450. Well, no bank is going to lend you money for more than what it's worth. So three things can happen if it doesn't appraise. You can lower to fair market value, meaning if you were under contract for 450 and the appraiser says it's worth four, you can lower the price of the house to four and then everybody can move on with the sale. Number two, a buyer can make up the difference. That rarely happens. Sometimes it'll happen if there's maybe a thousand or two thousand dollar dispute on that. So if, if you were under contract for 450 and the appraisal comes in at 448, maybe the buyer will have some money to make up that difference, but I'd say nine out of 10 times it doesn't happen. It's usually the seller reducing to the fair market value. Or the third thing that can happen is you can all walk away if we can't have a meeting on the minds of appraisal. And because maybe you're in a short sale um, or if you have to lower, then you have to bring funds to closing and you can't do that. So all parties can walk away. That's what happens on appraisal. Number eight, how does the home inspection contingency work? Well, the contract's going to outline the timeline that you have to do your inspections. Typically that's around 10 to 14 days. So let's just say it's 14 days. You will have 14 days to do all the inspections that you would like to do. So if you wanna perform radon or have a roof inspection done or HVAC, you have 14 days to do that or 10 or whatever we negotiated, but that's outlined in the contract. Once your inspection deadline is up and you turn in your inspection and the report, um, that will be turned into you. That's how long the buyers have. You as the seller will have seven days to negotiate back and forth with the buyer of what you will repair and what you won't repair. So again, the buyers will have about 10 to 14 days. They will turn in their inspection addendum with the request for repairs. As your agent, I will help you decide what really is a true defect and what you should do and what's kind of cosmetic and that you aren't really required to do and we will negotiate that and you'll have seven days and nobody can unilaterally cancel a contract within those seven days of negotiation. Um, it would have to be you know, determined by both of you if you both went out before those seven days, but good thing to know that you can't just terminate. Uh, what items, number nine, what items convey, what items stay with the home? Attachment is an issue. So cabinets that are screwed in, they are to stay with the home. Cabinets that are maybe hanging by a nail technically are personal property and don't need to stay. Uh, a TV mount is personal property. It doesn't actually need to stay even though it is screwed into the wall. Um, but if you take that down as the seller, you're going to have to fill the hole and make the wall whole again. So attachment is kind of an issue. Here's what I'll tell you as a seller. If you have grandma's chandelier hanging here and you wanna take that with you, take it down before you put your house on the market because I'll tell you, oh, sorry about that. Buyers don't sometimes want something until they're told they can't have it and then that makes that all the more um, appealing to them. Then all of a sudden they want the chandelier that was your grandma's and you never wanted to leave it. Take it down before you even list your house. Uh, so things that convey are things that are attached. The refrigerator doesn't automatically convey. It has a plug um, that doesn't automatically stay, but things that do are like um, a built-in microwave. It's built in, so that does stay. When in doubt, we'll walk you through what stays, what, what do, uh, does not. Curtains, they can go with you, their personal property. Curtain rods are to stay unless we specify otherwise. So any questions on attachment, let me know. Finally, number 10, when is the best time to sell my home? I get this on every listing appointment I go to. There's no good time. The best time is when you are ready. I will say it, I prefer the spring market sometimes because that's when you do have a lot of buyers out. The problem is you also have a lot of sellers that waited for the spring market, so then you have more competition. Houses sell all throughout the year. 
So it really comes down to when the best time is for you. That said, I do like spring a little more. I think things show better in the spring. Um, you have school that's getting out in June. So if you're moving away, you can kind of, you know, um, negotiate that in there. So those were the 10 questions that I have for frequently asked questions when you're listing your house. If you all have a question, like I said, put it in the comments. Um, or if you're too shy, send me a message and I'll be happy to answer the question for you. I hope that helps. Next Tuesday, I will be back with um, some tips for buyers. We did some this uh, past Tuesday for tips for buyers as well. And then next Thursday, I will be back and we're going to actually dissect a little bit of the contract to get into a little more of these, um, a lot of these frequently asked questions, but on a more in-depth basis. So, all right, guys, I'm Shannon Milligan from RVA Home Team at eXp Realty, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend ahead. Bye, y'all.